Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, dear friends. I am Professor Jaseem Ahmed from IAC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia. Today, I am going to start to talk on aspects of development. And in this series of lectures on aspects of development, this is the first lecture on this topic. And the title of this discussion is Introduction to Physical, Social, and Intellectual Development. So, uh, the main objectives of today's discussion are that uh, after the discussion is over you will be in a position to uh, state the meaning of physical development you will be in a position to tell the meaning of social development you will be also in a position to define intellectual development in your own words and you will also list out salient features and characteristics of physical social and intellectual development and finally you will be able to describe how to enrich and enhance these aspects of development among learners. So friends, before we go into the details of the physical development, social development and mental development, I think it is very essential to put some light on growth and development, how these two concepts are differentiated from each other. You must be aware that growth is a quantitative change in the body of an organism, in the body of a child whereas development is a qualitative change. So you can say that growth as a quantitative aspect of development, whereas development as a wider term, it is overall change in the body of an organism. For example, the change in the size of finger or growth, or you can say the increase in the size of finger, in the size of arm is a part of growth, whereas the functioning aspect of the arm functioning aspect of the fingers, the ability to use fingers, the ability to move fingers, the ability to use fingers for certain activity is a, a, a functional part of this finger and that's why it is development. It is not a simple growth. So now you can also uh, observe that the growth is directly observable in nature. So you can observe any kind of growth going on in the learner. You can observe the height increasing from you know uh, birth uh, time of birth to different ages you can observe how the learner is you know progressing in their uh, in, in their uh, in their height in their tallness and uh, uh, how the weight is increasing and how the fingers are you know going to change how the body parts are changing how you know the appearance of an individual appearance of the learner is changing these all are you know part of growth which can be observed by any individual which can be observed by the parents which can be observed by the teachers whereas development is indirectly observable you cannot directly observe you know development you cannot directly observe the ability of the, an individual to write you will have to put the, the learner, you will have to put the child to write something and only then you can observe whether the learner is able to write or not. So the functional part cannot be observed directly, they, they are observed through indirect you know, process. So uh, you can say that uh, uh, as we have you know, uh, physical tools of you know, measurement, we have, uh, we have a, you know, a scale for measuring the length of, a, uh, of an object. We have, you know, we have a, uh, a beaker to uh, measure the quantity of water or quantity of the chemical in the given beaker. Uh, we have the, uh, you know, weight uh, uh, and balance to measure the, the quantity of an object which can be, uh, uh, which, which can be uh, weighted, uh, which can be measured using the balance. Uh, so we have different tools of measurement 
uh, of the physical quantities like we can also measure the temperature of our body using our uh, you know uh, thermometer so these are the tools and that's the reason that growth can be measured with perfection whereas development cannot be measured with perfection because development is not directly observable for example intelligence of an individual cannot be observed directly you will have to take intelligence test and that intelligence test too do not observe with perfection at some point of time the same intelligence test will give you 120 iq of the same child and at another time the same test by the uh, by the same child uh, will give you 118 or 1 pair or maybe 130 iq so these uh, these are the tools like tool to measure attitude tool to measure aptitude the tool to measure interest these are the personality variables and these are developmental aspects which uh, cannot be measured with perfection. Although we try to measure these things for the educational purposes, but these tools do not give the perfect result. Again, you must be aware that growth is a time bound process. So when, and the, when the child reaches the puberty stage, the growth process is a stops, but the developmental process goes uh, go out throughout the life. So development basically starts from the womb of the mother and it, it goes on until the individual, you know, uh, uh, go to the uh, next, you know, next life, you can say, go to the tomb, you can say. So cradle to uh, grave, the process of development starts from cradle and it goes uh, on to the grave. Similarly, growth may or may not bring development. It should be also taken into consideration the growth may or may not bring development. Whereas development, uh, uh, development uh, is also possible without full growth. For example, you can take the example of a, of a person who is not uh, having good height. The person is dwarf, but despite being dwarfness, the person may have so many capacities and so many abilities. They can perform in some field better than the normal person. Uh, so these are the basic differences between growth and development. Both are very important for the education of children. One should also understand that growth and development go hand in hand until maturity. So until and uh, until the age when a learner, when the child gets mature, till that process, till that moment of life, growth and development go hand in hand. Because of this, the two terms growth and development are generally used collectively as development. So whenever we use development in our you know succeeding lectures, succeeding discussion, you should. Uh, you should uh, uh, receive it as growth and development collectively. After maturity, growth stops, but development go on until the age at which the effect of aging becomes dominant in individual's behavior. Now, friends, come to the various aspects of development. Here we are going to talk about six major aspects which are the part of our curriculum, part of our discussion. These six aspects are physical development, intellectual or mental development, social development, emotional development, moral development, and language development. Out of these six development, you know, today's discussion is based on the first three, that is physical development, intellectual development, and social development. And these three developments will be discussed only at basic level, that is introductory part of all these development, because the main discussion or the in-depth discussion or the complete and whole discussion will be taken up by uh, uh, by some other you know expert in another presentation another discussion sometime you know later so first of all talk about physical development you must be aware that uh, uh, physical development uh, what uh, would be you can imagine uh, by just looking at the term physical as as we know that physical objects are those which are having physical existence so similarly physical development are those development which are you know which can be observed, which are there, which are the, these are the developments which take place in the body of an organism, either internal or external, but which results into the growth and development of body parts of an individual. So growth and development of physical parts, that is internal and external organs, comes under physical development. And the main, you know, main component of uh, uh, this physical development is basically change in size, change in weight of an individual, change in, you know, height of an individual, change in body proportion of an individual of a growing child, 
the, the change in physical appearance of a child, all these comes under physical development. So, dear learners, changes occur in the functioning of glands, all other system of the body like nervous system, circulatory system, respiratory system, digestive system, skeletal system, muscular system, lymphatic system, and reproductive system. And all these systems, you know, grow and develop in terms of its functioning. Now, try to understand and try to see the pattern of physical development. It is very important for a teacher as well as for the parents to understand and to know what is the general pattern of growth and development. What are the general pattern of physical development of the children so that the parents as well as teachers can be aware about these things and can guide the children, can educate their children, can teach the children and can do proper management for the proper growth and development of the children in the family environment as well as in the school environment. And if need arise, they may refer their children, their learners to some doctors and some counselors if the need arises on the day. So now let us see the, uh, the pattern of physical development. Although you will find that there is a wide individual differences as we know that, you know, uh, we all are born uh, and we are uh, the product of heredity and environment. Each and every child is unique as we have discussed in the previous presentation that each child is unique, each learner is unique and each learner, each of us, each and every personality, you know, is a product of heredity and environment and you must be aware that heredity is different for each, all of us, for every one of us. And environment also varies from individual to individual, from, uh, from family to family, from society to society, from community to community. Even within the family, you know, the environment differs for one uh, child and for other child, for different siblings, for different brothers and sisters because of, you know, pattern of communication and pattern of interaction, pattern of friendship that they, that they, dis, that, that they you know, develop in their life. So, uh, let us look at some of the important pattern of physical development. Uh, uh, not a perfect, but, but to some extent, follow a general pattern. That is very important to understand. Number one, increase in body height and weight. You know, average weight at birth of a child is 7 to 8 pounds, which is equivalent to 3.1 kilogram to 3.6 kilogram. So, if the child is born, maybe underweight or maybe overweight. In both the cases, the doctors, the parents need to be alert. Similarly, average length or height of a child at birth is 19 to 20 inches. And, and after the birth, first two years, see rapid increase in height and weight of the children, but steady and slower from third year till puberty. By five years of age, height is almost double and weight increase almost five times. These are the general pattern. Similarly, during adolescence, that is between age 12, 13 to age 18, 19, sudden increase in height and weight is observed among the growing children. Girls reach puberty about one or two years earlier than boys do. Therefore, between 12 to 14 years of age, girls are slightly taller and heavier than boys of that age. But boys surpass the girls again in their height and weight. By the end of adolescence, boys are generally taller and heavier than girls and they achieve their maximum height, weight, may have lots of variation depending upon environment and nutrition available to the growing children. Now see the change in proportion of the different parts of the body of a growing child. You may have, may have observed or you can observe uh, from today uh, if chances uh, are available to you that the newborn baby, uh, baby's head is one fourth of body height at birth. So whenever a child is born, his you know head is almost one fourth of the body height. As the child grows, the proportion of the head decreases, and by the age of eight years, head is equal to one by eight of body height. So you can see that the proportion of head is decreasing day by day as the child is growing. Most of children acquire their milk teeth by the time they are of two years. By the end of five years of age, the permanent teeth begin to appear. They take longer to grow as compared to milk teeth. Growth and development of internal organs and their functioning. All system constantly grow and develop from birth until maturity. The general trends are are uh, uh, very rapid from birth to two to three years. Uh, it means that after birth to the age of two to three years, 
it uh, the the change is very rapid it changes very rapid then it comes uh, it becomes slower till 12 to 13 years of age which is the beginning of the adolescence first 3 years of adolescence rapid growth and development takes place and again it slow down until they attain maturity so this is the general trend now come to the motor development which is very important in the life of each and every individual each and every growing child no you must be aware that motor development are the development which is generally uh, basically you know related to the motor activities or the activity of the body parts which are involved in you know in in some sort of functioning or some sort of movement for example if you write and you write with the help of fingers and use use of finger for writing is the, is basically motor activity of the finger you know if you walk you walk with the help of your feet uh, and this is motor activity of your leg if you jump again so you are using some motor activities if you are you know painting uh, or if you are drawing you are using motor activity of your hands your fingers so these are the motor activities so each and every activity which we perform in our day to day life is a result of motor activity and is a result of motor development it is very important for a teacher and for a uh, parent to understand these and to uh, to know the pattern of this development so that they can you know observe and uh, um, they can uh, they can uh, they can they can take care of the proper development of the child so ability to move use body parts is basically motor development as, as i have already said according to pro and pro uh, motor capacities are the various kinds of bodily movements that are made possible through the coordination of nerve and muscle activity for example walking running jumping swimming grasping any object throwing you know a stone or anything uh, by the children uh, then catching if 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 the, if the children are playing cricket or you know catching some balls then writing activity by the learners then eye movement and the children uh, children are, and we also uh, have some eye movement we used to see here and there up and down so we move our eyes in different directions from where the you know voice is coming sound is coming from where any kind of signal is coming you used to uh, you know move your eyes this is again motor activity again so for holding uh, a pens holding a pen by the you know children or by all of us uh, or any other tool uh, it is also a kind of motor activity so without these movements no skills can be performed by any child by any individual so it is very important so observing the pattern of motor development at different stages and taking proper action to improve upon is very important task for teacher for is for especially those teacher who are teaching at pre nursery and pre you know school level as well as at primary level of education but of course it is equally important for all the parents and all the individuals who are involved in parenting of the children and then come to uh, to the eye coordination you must have observed that you know how uh, the eye coordination work for the children and for an individual see whether it is satisfactory you have to see whether the newborn baby has a proper eye movement or not mm. whether it is satisfactory or not whether the child is focusing eyes on the stationary object and following eyes on the moving object or not you will see that at the birth of the child children usually uh, focus on stationary object but after some time the child moves their eye uh, you know uh, uh, left and right uh, up and down and the movement of eye uh, you know starts and if it is coordinated well uh, uh, you can uh, you can you can find, uh, think that the pro the process of the development of eye coordination is satisfactory similarly you can uh, look into the control and movement of head you must uh, have observed that uh, the, the, the the newly born babies uh, especially from age 0 to 1 month they have little control over their head so whenever you lift a baby you need to support uh, give support to the head of the baby from uh, below uh, uh, because they need the support but after one month from one month to two month head movement starts so the children and the and, and the baby used to move their head left and right and uh, to see something uh, so from where the voice is coming they uh, you know uh, move towards uh, that side so they raise head above surface so this starts then after uh, you know uh, three months over three months and they are in a position to hold head erect uh, on sitting you know, which was not possible before so this is basically the gradual development uh, in the uh, control and move, control and movement of head of the child so now friends uh, come to the elementary school stage 
which is the most important concern from, for all of us, all the teachers who are teaching at you know elementary level from class one to class eight, or or, or, or teaching the children who are between the age group of six to fourteen years. Uh, you will find that uh, the children at this stage pay attention for a little longer duration as compared to the duration they were in a position to pay attention at the previous age level. Here, uh, after six years, you will find that the attention span is uh, a little longer. And this is very important for learning. And if you find that the span, attention uh, duration is not longer, it is a still, you know, short, then it is a, uh, it is a point to be noted and uh, we need to take care of the child. By seven years, uh, grips pen tightly and holds it close to the point. So you will find that the children at seven years, and you know, uh, when they hold the pen, the grips pen very tightly and hold it close to the point. By eight years, uh, they may write more evenly and easily as the hand-eye coordination improves a lot. So if this is the pattern of growth of the child in terms of you know writing and holding the pen, then you can say that uh, the child is growing and developing uh, in a proper manner. But if you don't see these changes, these growth and these pattern of development as far as the holding of pain is concerned and uh, pay, uh, atten pay, pay, uh, paying attention to uh, the teacher is concerned, you should be very alert about that. At 10 to 12 years of age, uh, the, children, the children show manipulative skills more precisely and so they are in a position to do uh, manipulative skills on their own by the guidance of the teacher. So this was all about the uh, physical development. Of course, it was very brief, and I hope the uh, the lecture which will be which will be presented to you specifically on physical development, and they will uh, take more attention to the detail of uh, of the physical development. Here, this uh, uh, presentation, this discussion was basically introductory, and so it was limited to certain extent. Now come to the social development, uh, uh, the another aspect. You know, social development is uh, is another very important aspect. Uh, when I say very important, uh, I feel you know uh, something sorry in myself because each and every aspect of development are basically equally important because all developments are interrelated, interconnected, and influence one another. So you can't say that this one is uh, more important and that one is less important. So each and every aspect of development are equally important and all uh, must uh, be taken care of by the parents and by the teachers. So what is the basics of the social development? What is the idea of social development? And so uh, we are going to discuss about the introductory aspect of the social development. As the name uh, suggests itself, social development means, uh, means basically socialization of the child. You know, this term basically uh, is new for you, for the people who are coming to the field of education. But for social scientists, this is a very important term. So, socialization is a process of transformation of a child from, you know, individual being to social being. So, when a child is born in the family and, and it, as it grows up, you know, the child at early stage is basically individual being. Means the child thinks that everything, you know, belongs to, uh, belongs to him or her. Everything, even 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 the small child, the infant, you know, uh, used to think that the mother, the mother belongs to him or her only, and no other siblings, no other brother and sister can 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 you know can uh, uh, compete uh, for the same mother. Uh, so uh, the, the smallest uh, sibling, the the infant, the smallest child of the family, you know, who is you know uh, at, at very early stage. They used to think that father and mother and sister and brother and whatever communities, whatever twice are there in the family, all belongs to him only. And they don't want to, you know, share it with other members of the family. So this is individual being. You will uh, observe and you must have observed that at early stage, when the full packet of the chocolate is given to a child, then the child don't want to share it with other, with his brothers or sisters, even don't want to share with his father and even don't want to share with the mother also. But a time comes when the child starts to share with the mother and after some time the child uh, share it with the uh, father and after again some time the child share it with the uh, uh, siblings with the brothers and sisters in the family and but do not share with the other members other members of the society but uh, uh, in course of time as the child grows as the child you know uh, internalize the social system as the child learns the society and the social values and ethics the child you know grow and develop in social aspects 
and the time comes in his life then when the child in a, is in a position that individual is in a position to sacrifice everything for the society and for the community for the family and no and they don't matter uh, whether something is you know uh, rest with them or not so this is the transformation of individual from individual being to social being and this transformation this conversion of an individual being to social being is known as socialization and the children the learner the students who are more socialized are, are are basically good human being are basically you can say that they are, are they are on proper you know proper social development you know uh, way and and if uh, the children are not transforming in this way and they are not in a position to learn they are not interested to uh, communicate with the society intermingle with the society mix with the other children of in children in the class or in the school mix with the relatives mix with the community members then there is a question mark so this process of socialization uh, must be taken care of and each and every teacher and each and every parent should take care of whether the socialization of the child is going on in a proper way or not and this socialization process needs to be strengthened needs to be you know needs to be uh, to be supported and and needs to be guided by the parent guided by the teacher guided by the seniors so so that the, through this socialization the learner the individual the student may be in a position to well adjust in the society and they can attain social adjustment in the society that they live uh, this is very important and this is the reason that uh, garrett uh, uh, defines socialization as a social development uh, uh, a process of social development whereby the biological individual is converted into a human person means human person means the person who imbibes each and every ethics and social values social customs social traditions of the society that they live in so learning to conform to group standards conducts traditions by mixing with the family peer groups society community and develop the sense of you know oneness have intercommunication and cooperation these are the most important aspects of social development and the social development through this social development through the social interaction through uh, social learning of the children uh, takes place and, and 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 the learners the students the growing child learn the social values the values which are enshrined in our constitution even the values values which are practiced by the family the values which are practiced by the society the values which are respected in the society and the values basically which govern the society and through which the social identity of the society is established and the social identity of uh, uh, is is imbibed by the growing children so this is all about you know social development of the learner and this social development is very important for a teacher because teachers require to create such an environment in the school in the classroom where along with the intellectual development along with the development of knowledge of the particular subject along with the you know subject uh, knowledge of different subject like science mathematics or history or political science or language along with all these subject knowledge must strand the learners the children must learn the the social ethics must learn the values must learn the social systems must learn the traditions of the society only then they can be having a balanced develop balanced personality uh, and if there is some lack if the students are not involving with other children of the class if the students are not interacting with the other children of the class if the students are not interacting with the other members of the society then this is basically a hindrance this is basically a barrier uh, in the social development of the learner so uh, uh, you must have heard the name vygotsky vygotsky have a tremendous job in the field of social development they have given the theory uh, and uh, and he has discussed theory in detail how social development takes place here in this discussion our uh, objective is not to discuss the vygotsky's theory and vygotsky's contribution in the field of social development this topic will be discussed in the some in some other presentation here our purpose was to just introduce the the aspect of social development hopefully you must have understood that now uh, come to the third important aspect of development which is intellectual development that is mental development that is the development of our mental abilities development of mental abilities that is cognition intelligence reasoning ability logical thinking uh, thinking uh, in different directions that is you know um, uh, Uh, horizontal thinking and vertical thinking and then imagination in the finding cause and effect relationship 
and all other abilities and functions in which mind dominates or comes under the domain of intellectual development or mental development. Similarly, you know, we all have some, you know, capacity of memorize something. So ability to memorize something, ability to solve problems and the problem solving skills, how you tackle the problem, how you handle the problem, how you face the problem, how you look into the problem and whether you, you try to solve the problem or you just, you know, flit away just looking at the problem. So these are the uh, skills which comes under the intellectual development of the children. Then, uh, you know, all these development, that is the mental development or intellectual development depends on so many factors. So many factors and it starts with you know sensation uh, you must have uh, studied you must have heard about sensation sensation is a mechanical process so whenever you receive some information um, through your sense organ like your are uh, uh, looking at something your skin with, with the help of your skin with the help of your eye with the help of your tongue with the help of your nose by you know smelling and with the help of uh, listening to some, some some voices so these are the you know sense organs and through which we receive information and this is basically mechanical part of you know biological process and mechanical process where just you receive information now what information is received and uh, this nervous system uh, uh, you know the the, the, the neuron uh, uh, carry this information to the mind and mind try to give meaning to that information what it is for example if your hand is touched with some object then this is just, just a sensation but the mind tells what it is is it a duster is it a pencil is it a chalk is it a book is it my bag is it a mobile so this giving meaning to that sensation is perception and this sensation and perception is very important uh, uh, very important in, 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 in the in the mental development or in the intellectual development of the child uh, so uh, as a teacher we are supposed to you know sensitize children to what sensation and uh, and uh, try and uh, train them in you know perception percep perceptive skills so that they can perceive uh, in, in a right direction in a proper direction then with the help of this sensation and perception uh, uh, concept of uh, uh, any object is developed in the mind of the learner so the concept formation is third very important aspect of intellectual development or mental development so uh, we learn a lots of concept in all subjects be it a social science be it a language be it science physics chemistry biology mathematics any subject of the world any subject of study in the world basically full of concepts are there and all these concepts are learned by the learners and taught by the teachers but the teaching of concept with with proper you know strategy is very important and that uh, is not possible without understanding sensation and perception if you uh, give the learner an opportunity to sense something then you will be in a position to develop concept uh, in, in the right manner and, in, and with an easy process for example if you want to uh, if, if you want to teach about the length and breadth uh, the concept of length of a table so give the learner an opportunity to measure the length so table is there desk is there and give them the chance to observe uh, and, and use the scale for measurement this will help them to develop the concept of measurement and concept of length of measuring anything so this is concept formation so in the concept formation process sensation is important perception is important and during the process of you know concept formation the child discriminate uh, among different ideas and different things different uh, you know meaning that uh, that are coming to their mind and ultimately they uh, generalize the concept whatever being taught to them and whatever they are trying to learn and finally they reach to the acquisition of that concept so there is a detailed discussion and detailed deliberation and detailed method of teaching concept and basically there is a, uh, a models of teaching and which talks about the uh, teaching of concept how uh, concept should be taught to the children here also in this syllabus of child development learning in the last unit we have a topic titled as models of teaching where we are supposed to discuss the concept attainment model of Brunner there we will discuss the models of Brunner regarding concept attainment here uh, we are not going to go into the detail of concept formation now understanding uh, and other higher cognitive skills like analyzing synthesizing or creating uh, and evaluating uh, involving learners mind intellect all these comes are comes under intellectual development of the child and mental development of the learner uh, and the, uh, similarly designing teaching learning tasks uh, by the people teachers 
like you people who are BA students, you are supposed to design teaching learning tasks when you will go for a school internship program in some school during teaching practice. We the teachers and all the school teachers are required to design the teaching learning process and this designing uh, while we design teaching learning process while we design curriculum we need to take care of the age of the child the stage of the child the basically the intellectual developmental stage of the child and looking, looking into that stage we can design the activities for learning we can design the curriculum in a proper way so that the students can understand all those things in a in a, in a swift manner or in an easy manner uh, you must have heard about Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget has uh, given the theory of intellectual development, uh, uh, mental development, uh, and uh, he has uh, very tremendous work on this in this area. Uh, the work is basically a very you know unique type of work. It is a longitudinal study uh, which was done on his own child. Uh, this is not the point of discussion that in today's discussion this will be again discussed uh, where uh, the topic on mental development will be uh, covered in some other presentation. Now, uh, a very important thing is that uh, we must understand what are the factors affecting mental development or growth and mental development. Uh, as we have uh, discussed earlier, heredity and environment are two most important factors uh, which affect all growth and development. Uh, maturation and learning are responsible for controlling the process of mental growth and development. Maturation helps in achieving the physical growth of the, of the neurons and the nervous system, which in turn affect the process of mental growth and development of the learners and and this is the reason that we must take care of you know uh, take care of giving the right kind of environment to the learners and the right kind of nutrition support to the learn learners so that the uh, the nervous system the neurons and the entire process of you know biological system must have uh, must be having good you know nutritional value so that they can grow and develop in a proper manner uh, brain and nervous system play a key role in the direction of mental development. Uh, 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 now, the question is how to, how to enhance our, or improve the mental development of the children. How to in, enhance or how to improve, how to you know, increase the mental ability or the intellectual development of the learner. According to Sorensen, a child's legs, arms and body are made stronger by healthful play. Uh, he means to say that if you provide right kind of activity, right kind of play, right kind of you know uh, uh, field activity, uh, students will be having uh, opportunity to uh, strengthen their leg, their arms, their body, uh, and and such other parts. Uh, similarly, we can deduce that the mind, with its organic counterpart, the nervous system, improves and becomes better equipped because of use and exercise in the form of reading, calculating, memorizing, speaking, imagining, and other mental activities. So if you want to develop the intellectual ability, the mental abilities of the learner, you need to involve learners in these activities uh, so that the student can use their mental abilities frequently in a big manner, uh, more frequently, and the more they will use their brain, the more they will use their reasoning, the more they will use their mind, the more they will use uh, their logic uh, and, and, set, and, and such uh, mental abilities, uh, they will add to their development, their intellectual abilities. Now, the last uh, uh, important point of uh, today's presentation is educational implication. What are the educational implications of all these growth and development or uh, the understanding of all these growth and development for a teacher is very important because unless you know these the, the general, you know, uh, general process, unless you know the, uh, the general, you know, uh, 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 principles of development, unless you know the, the, the process of development and uh, how it goes on, how you will uh, in a position to support your learner to grow in a better way. So understanding helps arranging for proper learning exercises to the children at uh, the very appropriate time. What is expected from the children at different ages help teacher to assess their growth and development and provide proper learning environment experiences and refer to medical treatment or counseling if required. So if you know all these things, uh, if you know that at uh, say six years of age and at eight years of age, at nine years of age, at 12 year, 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 years of age, what would be the level of the growth and development of the learner and what are the problem being faced by the learner, only then you can provide a better opportunity and then you can you know, provide some, 
some uh, you know uh, as a news only then you can provide some you know ways to handle those problem and to uh, put the child on the right track and if, you, if this is not in the control of the uh, of the teacher then you can refer to the some medical practitioners so teacher can himself or herself take many preventive and curative measures to bring the developmental process on track for each and every learner you are teaching in the classroom or the school premises teacher may be better prepared to provide needed care security and preventive safeguard for their adequate adjustment well-being and progress of each and every child it, it helps uh, uh, these understanding that is understanding of the growth and development and the pattern of the physical and social and mental development help the teacher curriculum planner and trainers to plan age appropriate content learning experiences assessment studies and other related activities so that the entire process of teaching and learning the entire process of education of the learners can uh, go on in a right manner so friends uh, now uh, uh, we are reaching at the last stage of our discussion and presentation uh, so today we have discussed uh, about the growth and development and uh, we found that growth and development are of course two different terms growth is you know quantitative in nature whereas development is a qualitative you know change in the body of an organism but uh, in wider terms they are used interchangeably and we have also discussed the aspects of development like uh, physical development uh, and social development uh, intellectual development the other three development uh, that is emotional development uh, language development uh, uh, will be discussed uh, in some other presentation and of course the introductory part of these that is emotional development language development uh, uh, and moral development will be taken uh, in, uh, in next presentation by me itself but uh, the theory behind all these development will be discussed by some other SS expert in the area in the uh, coming series of lecture and we have also discussed about uh, the education implication for teachers or all these three uh, you know aspects of development and uh, uh, we can say that if uh, we as a teacher understand the pattern of all these growth and development only then we can uh, we can act as a better teacher uh, we can be equipped for you know guiding the students guiding the learners on the right path and uh, we can add to the proper development and the growth and proper education of the children who are under our you know um, under our guidance and our uh, teaching learning process in the classroom or in the school premises with this i thank you all and wish to see you in the next discussion thank you so much